It was a normal Sunday night, 9th of March. Um, I was settled at home. Uh, wasn't thinking anything at all. Uh, wasn't expecting what was going to happen to me in the next few hours to happen. And I felt a very strong draw to go down to the Chapel of Adoration on the Falls Road, uh, which I responded to. I came to the chapel at 8.30 for prayers and for the rosary. And the Chapel of Adoration has perpetual adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, the real presence of Jesus um, on the altar. Um, so the rosary began and then the, night the sisters had the night prayers and I was asked to do a reading by Mother Mary Josephine on the meditations of St. Joseph. It was beautiful. Um, I, I just was very touched and I went back to my place kneeling, praying, and not expecting anything other than obviously just the, the tranquility of being in the presence of Christ, which is wonderful, but what, I didn't know what was going to happen next. So night prayer finished and very soon, a few moments later, um, I was aware of an amazing strong touch just here in my heart. And as I feel it now, it's, it, it makes me feel very emotional. And I knew it was the touch of Christ. I knew and it, it, felt, it was exhilarating. It was amazing. It filled me with a lot of joy and a lot of peace. And I looked up and I, could, I knew it was the, the Blessed Sacrament. I knew it was Christ. And I, very clear to me it came within just a moment of receiving that touch that I would be a sister of adoration. I knew interiorly very clear. And I have to say, when that came, I just, insofar as I could, because I was taken up on the moment, I just sort of was caught back and went, you know, Sister of Adoration, but it was just, I wasn't in control of this. Um, th this was the Lord. And uh, so I sat with this and I felt exhilarated. I felt amazed, happy, excited, just very joyful. And at the same time, distracted because I had never had this experience happen to me like this before. And... Um, so I sat with it for about almost two hours in the chapel and it was an out of this world experience, just totally mind blown. And I was so happy and it was, you know, just an experience of, like I said before, various people have asked me, it just like falling in love, falling in love with God. And I knew what it was. So two hours later, about 11 o'clock, I left the Adoration Sisters you know, and I, I, I have to say this, you know, it comes back to me very clear. This is like I was drunk, you know, but it was the Holy Spirit. And I drove home and I couldn't get enough information on the Sisters of Adoration. I googled all about them and came on an article about on the Superior General, Mother Mary uh, Josephine. And I, I drank it all in and I couldn't get enough information. I just was googling, googling, googling. And eventually, in the early hours of the morning, I just went to bed. But I was, I just felt just exhilarated, totally high, you know, but high on, on the love of God. And um, it was an amazing experience. So I went to bed eventually. And the next day I got up, I knew I couldn't go to work. I, thankfully, I wasn't in court and I hadn't any concrete commitments. I had plenty of work to do, but I just managed to come in the next day and go to the chapel here at 12 noon with the intention of seeing uh, Mother Mary Josephine to explain to her what happened to me, because I, 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 real, I realized that she would know. So um, I came to 12 Mass and uh, it never occurred to me to hit the doorbell. It never occurred to me to knock the door. I just was just, you know, just so taken, taken up with what had happened to me. You know, my head couldn't catch up with it. It was just an outer, uh, an outer body experience, but I was feeling it, you know, very strong. So I then had the Mass and later I managed to meet Mother Mary Josephine. And uh, we met in this, this, this room here that you're filming in. And um, I poured out my heart to her and explained to her what had happened. And she knew. She knew it was a calling. And uh, I knew myself it was a calling. It was very clear. Um, but I had never expected it. And the moment before the call came, I wasn't thinking of it at all. If you had said to me that I would, I would have a calling to be a sister of adoration, I would have looked at you. I've been coming to the sisters here for years, to the adoration chapel. And I've always skipped out the door. It's a beautiful place, but I've never thought of joining it. And um, it was the furthest thing, really, honestly, from my mind. So I got speaking to Mother Mary Josephine, and we talked over things. It was very clear it was a calling, a strong calling to be a sister of adoration. And one of the things I remember saying, and I've said this before to other people, is 
I just put my head in my hands and I said to her, I says, Mother, how am I going to get my head around the brown? Do you know? I couldn't even think of that. I mean, one minute I was working away and life was just normal. The next minute I have this amazing experience from the Lord, which just filled me with such joy and love and peace. I never thought that I would ever receive this. I wouldn't have chosen it for myself, but I'm so glad the Lord gave it to me because it has been such a wonderful blessing. And I feel that in this calling that I will be fully fulfilled as a child of God. Um, you know, it's just very emotional. I just feel it, you know. I remember when this happened to me, it was very clear and I knew it was a calling to be a sister of adoration. No other calling, no other um, congregation. That's what it was. And as well as that, a few days later, or maybe a day or two later, I asked myself, I said, oh, the Lord, Lord, why the Sisters of Adoration? Why not out in the community? Why not somewhere else? And interiorly, I felt it very strong. I called you to be a Sister of Adoration. And I never asked any more questions about it after that. This has not only just been a great a, a time of grace for me, it's been a great time of grace for the entire Adoration community, particularly in Belfast. Because just before I entered, a young girl by the name of Mara McAteer, now sister Mara McAteer from Castle Darg, she had entered on the 2nd of February 2014, a few weeks before I received my call. And she entered as a novice on the day that I, she, she was received, sorry, as a novice on the 6th of August on the day that I entered. And then very quickly after me on my heels, I keep her going about this, uh, Martina Purdy, the journalist, um, has been coming into the sisters and she too has a strong calling as with Mara and myself. And I understand uh, that this has been widely reported throughout the world and um, I'm absolutely delighted and I hope the Pope gets to hear about it. And if he does come to visit Ireland, that he comes to 63 Falls Road. We'll have the door open for him and the tea on. <laughs> Before I received my calling to become a Sister of Adoration, um, all I knew about the sisters is that they adore Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, which of course is wonderful, but that is all I knew. Uh, and when I received my calling, um, then after that I understood more about the sisters. They were founded by Mother Mary Therese de Bush, de Boucher, uh, and uh, she was born in 1803. The order began in 1847 in France, um, at the height of the French riots. Uh, Mother Mary Therese had received um, a vision from our Lord in 1847 in the Blessed Sacrament uh, Chapel um, during Adoration in the early hours of the morning, the Feast of the Sacred Heart, to receive his life, the re receive the life of Christ and communicate it to others. He wanted souls always before him in, in the chapel in the Blessed Sacrament. And you fast forward to May 1981 when the Sisters of Adoration opened their doors to the people of Belfast on the Falls Road in this very convent that we're sitting in now. At that particular time, people may recall that the hunger strikes were happening and we had 10 or 11 deaths of the hunger strikers at that time. The streets of the Falls Road in particular and the streets of Belfast were in flames, buses burnt, riots, fires, and yet this, the epicenter of that, of, of the epicenter of that trouble is the very place that our Lord chose to come and to have the Sisters of Adoration found their first community in Ireland. It is the same for today. When people walk through this door and come into the Chapel of Adoration, there is our Lord in the very heart, in the very centre of their lives. And an amazing thing as well, um, there's so many amazing things going on, but another amazing fact is that Sister Mara, a Macketeer, is the first postulant, the first vocation to the sisters in 18 years. And it's marvellous to think that in a matter of months after Sister Mara came in, that I entered as a, a, a postulant on the 6th of August, and that um, Martina Party is entering three new vocations within a matter of months. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing the Lord is doing, and it also emphasises again um, the immensity of the reality of the presence of Jesus 
in the Blessed Sacrament. I'm called to adore Christ in the Blessed Sacrament for, for, my, for all humanity, um, to, give, to, give him, to give him honor and to give him glory, you know, me, and also to offer my adoration and also my work outside of when I'm in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, when I work in the convent or whatever I do, in adoration and in reparation for the world, for all of humanity. And it's, um, it's beyond words, it's a, it's a wonderful privilege. And it is, it's been a great source of joy and, and peace for me. And um, I'm just absolutely delighted that God gave me this. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs>